So it turns out Miss Sayers isn't overly impressed with the air horn, as a lot of people aren't. So I had a little look around and I found this instead. And then I decided, no, 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 no. Let's stick with the air horn. Social distancing explained. Two meters for geographers is 0 0.008 on a 1 to 25,000 scale OS map. We need to do a bit more work on OS maps, on using scale, on using contour lines, on making sure we nail our compass directions, on using four and six figure grid references. The units we're doing at the moment on rivers and coasts would be perfect for that if we were in school. So be aware when we get back, we'll look a little bit more at those OS map skills. But for now, make sure you're staying 0 0.008 on a 1 to 25,000 scale map apart. That is two meters. Link to the Do Now quiz is on ePraise or in the description. Pause here and get it done. Answers already on there. So no particularly specific feedback today. Um, what I would say is I've seen some really good notes sent through on the hard engineering strategies that um, I spoke about in yesterday's video. However, 16 of you did the Do Now quiz on Microsoft Forms and about five or six of you sent me work. I'd like to see more. Um, I worry that you get to the Do Now quiz, you do it and then you switch off. So it'd be good to see that work from all 16 of you, knowing that at the very least you've started the video or been on ePraise enough to have seen the quiz. So well done to these guys, but uh, to the rest of you, we need to see uh, a bit more work emailed over, please. So for today's work, we're gonna look at coastal management again, and this time we're gonna look at soft engineering. Now we looked at soft engineering in terms of rivers, soft engineering in terms of coastal management follows a lot of the same principles. So where hard engineering had man-made structures built to prevent coastal flooding and to maintain existing coastlines, structures like uh, sea walls, curved sea walls, and structures like groins. Soft engineering is management that tries to work with natural processes to reduce flood risk and to maintain coastlines. So different to hard engineering in that it tries to work with existing natural processes in order to achieve the same goals. So the first of the three that we're going to look at is beach nourishment. Now we've got a couple of contrasting images here. We've got a guy with a shovel and we've got a trawler. Um, but in both of these, the, the simple diagram and in a photo, the, obje the objective is to build up the beach, to add material to the beach. Now the reason for this is that the best type of coastal defence is a well-established beach with very large amounts of sediment there as beaches absorb wave energy and beaches protect the land behind them. If a beach is being eroded, if material is being carried away by longshore drift, one of the best things you can do is to just replace that beach. And it could be that you use um, material from inland that is brought to the coast and deposited via diggers, or it could be that you get a boat like we see here, like this trawler, which will drag up material from the seabed and then spray it onto the beach in order to build up the beach. Either way, the beach becomes wider, the beach has got more material in it, the beach is capable of absorbing wave energy and therefore it protects the land behind it from erosion. Now the advantage is, erosion is reduced, the main advantage, it looks quite natural, um, you're not building large sea walls, you're not putting large groins in place, although on this photo there is already a groin. But it looks natural because you're just replacing natural material on the beach. It enables people to still use the beach because the beach is maintained. So if the beach is particularly important, perhaps for economic reasons, because it's a, a coastal resort, that beach is maintained 
as an attraction. However, this can be an expensive process. And if you're using the dredging up of material from the seabed, it can cause environmental damage to the seabed, even while trying to protect the beach in a very natural way. Also, because those processes of alongshore drift and erosion are not stopped, beach nourishment needs to be repeated over time, which is one of the things which makes it quite expensive. The fact that it's not just done once and it's done, it needs to be repeated. Our second example we're going to look at is beach reprofiling, where we take the existing beach and we reprofile it, in this case using uh, heavy machinery, to make it steeper. The big advantage of a steeper beach is that as destructive waves hit and as the swash moves up the beach, the swash uh, uses up huge amounts of energy going up the steeper slope, which is what the diagram on the left represents. The dotted line is the beach before reprofiling, the solid line is the beach after it's been reprofiled and made steeper. So when that energy is used up by the destructive wave, the swash going up the beach, it means there's less energy for the swash to carry material away. So a reprofiled beach reduces the rate of erosion because it reduces the amount of energy that a destructive wave has to erode material. Now, advantages of this are that it reduces coastal erosion, that it looks natural and definitely more natural than groins or seawalls or rock armour. Disadvantages this process needs to be repeated because over time the profile of the beach will return to its more natural uh, profile. Because it needs to be repeated, that can make it quite expensive. Our third uh, soft engineering strategy is sand dune regeneration, where people will plant uh, vegetation, people will plant grasses and small trees into uh, existing beachy areas to en enable more sand to build up around them as it's blown in land <coughs> by prevailing wind and allows sand dunes to get bigger and bigger. This then creates a natural barrier uh, for the land behind it, making erosion and making coastal flooding far less likely. There are a lot of advantages. If it's done by planting, it is relatively cheap and um, it creates natural habitats as well as looking extremely natural once it's established. But there are a number of disadvantages. It takes time for the sand dunes to build up. One way around that is to use nourishment to spray sand from the seabed onto the dune to build it up artificially. But of course, that then causes environmental damage on the seabed as materials dragged up from the seabed. Um, the other disadvantage is that it takes uh, time for vegetation to, to grow. If a decision is made that hard engineering or soft engineering is not going to be appropriate, if the cost and the effort involved in protecting the coastline from erosion and from flooding is deemed to be not worth the economic investment, then in some places managed retreat takes place. And we can see an example of it here. In this area, the land was not of high value. The cost of stopping the erosion that you can see taking place was extremely high. So therefore, it was decided to allow that erosion to happen and to move people and to move land use as much as possible away from the coastline and to just allow the erosion to take place. This is called managed retreat. You don't just let it happen. You plan for it and you make sure that in this case, caravans have been moved away from the coastline roads have been closed, people are kept out of areas which are at risk. So managed retreat occurs when land value values are low, when it's too expensive to protect the land, when the property that's going to be lost is not particularly valuable, and at that point managed retreat will occur. You won't see managed retreat when there's a coastal town, you won't see managed retreat when there's high value industrial land, uh, something like a factory or a power station. But when it is low value land, land use that can easily be moved elsewhere, then managed retreat is often the most sensible economic decision. So what I'd like you to do, rewatch if need be. If you feel that uh, you need to listen to me go through that again, please do. 
I want you to produce an annotated sketch of each of the three soft engineering strategies outlined below. Include what they are, how they work, and the advantages and disadvantages of each one for beach nourishment, beach reprofiling, and sand dune regeneration. Then write a short explanation of what managed retreat is and when it would be used. And I want you to send me a photo of this work. 16 of you yesterday did the quiz. About five or six of you sent me work. I'd love to have a photo of some work from all 16 of you and preferably as other people pick up this lesson from some of the other groups from even more of you. Guys, it takes no time at all. Email address is, um, email address I'll put on ePraise, but, but you should know by now. You take a photo on your phone, chuck that email address in, attach the photo, done. Make it happen because I want to get eyes on the work that you're doing, please. So, next week, coming up for you in your geography, you've got a coastal management case study. We're going to look at Swanage, we're going to look at the hard and soft engineering strategies that they've used, and we're going to look at how effective they've been. You've got exam questions. Next Thursday, we're going to set some exam questions based on coastal management more generally and looking at that coastal management case study specifically. And you've got your live sessions. If you haven't been, can you please use ePraise Messenger to send me uh, some of the topics that you want me to go back over. I know that uh, Zander's asked that we look at Hurricane Katrina, but if there are other things that we need to cover, make sure you've sent me that message so I can be planning that in advance ready for you guys on Monday. So homework questions, knowledge organisers are as an attachment on ePraise. Get them done because this really this is really good consolidation for the work that you're doing in the online video lessons.